name is Rebecca Powers with SLCT and here's what's happening in Sterling and Lancaster. The annual Lancaster Firefighters and Ladies Auxiliary Spaghetti Dinner will be held on May 17th from 1 to 5 p.m. at the Lancaster Fire Department. For more information or to purchase tickets, call 781-883-2587. The Lancaster Council on Aging hosts a pancake breakfast every Tuesday in the Lancaster Senior Center, located in the Community Center. For more information, call the COA at 978-733-1249. Animal Control Officer Louis Massa is reminding area residents that black bears are emerging from their winter dens and they are hungry. There are at least 4,000 black bears in Massachusetts and their range is expanding eastward. If you live in an area where bears have been spotted, be sure to take down bird feeders. Bears will often ignore natural food sources and head to bird feeders for an easy meal. Bears revisit feeders, garbage cans, or open compost piles where they find foods and they seek similar foods in neighboring yards. For more information, visit mass.gov slash bears. The Conan Public Library would like to announce its selection for the ninth annual One Book One Sterling program. Wonder by R.J. Palacio is the book the library is encouraging people who live, work, or visit Sterling to read and discuss to help unite the community. The Thayer Memorial Library will be hosting a photographic presentation, Kestrels and Cranberries, May 19th at 6.30 p.m. Photographer Joanne Mason will be bringing two live kestrels. For more information, contact the library at 978-368-8928. Worcester County Sheriff Louis Evangelitis is warning residents about a phone scam threatening citizens with fines or jail time for failing to comply with jury service in federal or state courts. A caller identifying himself as an officer from the Worcester County Sheriff's Office has attempted to pressure recipients into providing credit card information and other confidential data. These calls are fraudulent and are not connected with the U.S. Courts or the Worcester County Sheriff's Office. Anyone receiving such a call should notify the Clerk of Court's Office of the U.S. District Court in their area. Most cat owners don't know it, but lilies are lethally toxic to cats. They can cause fatal kidney failure from biting the leaves, licking the pollen, or even drinking the water from the vase. If you have a cat, please be careful and keep lilies out of your home. The Sterling Annual Memorial Day Parade will be held on Monday, May 25th, beginning at 11 a.m. at the Hillside Cemetery. Anyone who would like to help honor deceased veterans should arrive at the cemetery at 7.30 a.m to help raise the flags. On Sunday, April 26th, Sterling Boy Scout Troop 1 held an Eagle Scout Court of Honor at First Church in Sterling to celebrate the Eagle Scout status achievement of Grant Chapman and Jay Marr. Grant Chapman started scouting as a Tiger Cub and continues to participate in Troop 1 as an Assistant Scout Master. He has earned 26 merit badges. His most memorable scouting trips include a week-long canoeing trip on the Allagash River and snowboarding down Tuckerman's Ravine. Grant has hiked the 272-mile long trail in Vermont with his troop in five week-long backpacking trips. His Eagle Scout project was to repair and paint the Sterling Town gazebo. He plans to study chemical engineering at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst in the fall. Jay Marr started scouting in 2003 and has earned 30 merit badges. His most memorable scouting experience was being a counselor at Camp Wanoxet, where he taught scout skills to younger boys. Jay's Eagle Scout project was restoring and remarking the Dawson Nature Trail behind Dawson School in Holden. He also repainted the seating areas on the trail and posted educational signs. Jay plans to pursue a major in marketing and a minor in management at the University of Hartford's Barney School of Business. We would wish both these skilled and talented young men all the best as they enter adulthood and embark on their careers. The Lancaster Recreation and Trail Committee has released their 2015 Family Trail Walk series. The second walk will be held May 16th at 3 p.m. at the Mary Rowlandson Capture Site. This walk will be a moderately difficult hike. To register or for more information, contact Tim Kastner 
at thkastner at comcast.net. The Clinton Hospital will be holding a healthy cooking program May 19th at 10 a.m. at the Wheat Community Cafe, 272 High Street in Clinton. Participants will work with nutrition and culinary instructors to learn how to prepare simple and quick recipes and how to shop for affordable and healthy foods. For more information or to register, call 978-368-3716. May is Lyme Awareness Month. Spread by ticks, Lyme and other tick-borne diseases can be chronic and devastating. The symptoms also mimic other conditions from flu to ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. In this special report, I'll speak with Michelle Miller, founder of the Central Mass Lyme Foundation, about how to recognize the threat of Lyme disease and its prevention. I'm here with Michelle Miller. She and her husband, Ken, uh, have are the founders of the Central Mass Lyme Foundation. And uh, Michelle, we're here in an area that really looks an awful lot like most of uh, Worcester County looks. Yes. And the way that a lot of uh, New England looks, it's heavily wooded. Mm -hmm. Why is this kind of an area at particular risk for ticks and Lyme disease? Well, Lex, the state of Massachusetts, it is a hot zone for ticks and Lyme disease, as well as co-infections. Um, especially where we're standing right near a wooded area and also behind us there's like a, a, a puddle of water, any standing water. Ticks thrive in moist, damp areas. Kind of like mosquitoes. Yes, yes, exactly. And ticks and mos mosquitoes can transmit this, ba you know, bacteria, but ticks especially um, we, we have to be concerned about co-infections as well. In our foundation, we've had a lot of calls this week especially because ticks have been out for a while. Um, this past winter that we had, you might have thought that ticks weren't surviving. Sure. Because we had quite a, you know, a lot of snow, but it was quite the opposite, Lex. Um, there was a great, lot of insulation, insulation with the amount of snow that they had. Um, so they stayed alive. Ticks have a two-year life cycle and they're, they're looking to survive like we are by feeding on a warm-blooded host. And they're looking for you. They're looking for our pets. They're looking for any of other small mammals that may be around. So I tell people also, if they have bird feeders, they're also inviting small critters into their yard that will be feeding on the bird seed as well and also bringing ticks into their yard. So this sort of weather has probably actually made ticks come out sooner because yes. normally it seems to me that we don't really start to worry about this until we're, you know, well into the warm weather. But right. this has come really early this year. It has because of the winter that we did have. And also, um, you're going to start to see these, these warm days where people are going to want to go out biking and hiking, playing golf again, um, doing all those things outdoors, which, yes, it, it's a great thing, but we just encourage people to check themselves daily for now, ticks and their pets. Now, how do you do pets. this? Because now you've got, you've got yourself, you've got your kids, you've right, got Right, you've got your pets. How can people protect themselves? Well, we encourage people to use um, any natural tick repellents that they can. There is um, DEET that I told you about. That is a chemical. We encourage people not to spray that on their skin, but they can use that on their clothes. Mm -hmm. There's another chemical that people can use, Lex. It's called permethrin. A lot of hunters use this on their clothing, their boots, um, and their attire. Like I said, it, it's, a, it's a chemical, so we don't encourage anybody spraying that on their skin directly. Um, we encourage a lot of natural repellents and light-colored clothing. We should be wearing light-colored clothing so we can see the ticks crawl on us. Um, also, open-toed shoes, if you're hiking, are not recommended. Um, boots are preferably um, recommended for hiking. Those muck boots, those rubber boots, ticks can't crawl on that on that rubber material, so those are good for hiking. Um, 
you know, a, a lot of other preventative things is your pets. If your pets do sleep with you, um, they could be bringing those ticks into your, into your bed. If you have dogs that come in and out of the house, they could also, even if they don't sleep with you, they're still possibly bringing those ticks into the home with you. Um, if you are outdoors for a long period of time, we tell people take off all your clothes. Don't put them in the hamper. Put them immediately in the dryer on high heat for at least 10 minutes. And the ticks will be, will be killed. They don't like the sun. Ticks will never be in the, in the hot sun. They thrive more in the damp, shady areas. Now, if despite all of this, you still find a tick on yourself, on one of your kids, mm -hmm. on, uh, on your pet, what do you do? Well, we encourage people, Lex, to call. We have a toll-free line. It's 1-888-511-LIME. 5963 and we encourage people when they call in Lex to keep the tick. It may sound ridiculous like I told you but it's a lot easier to test the tick to see if it's carrying the Lyme, Lyme disease virus and co-infection. And how do they keep the tick? What do you, what do, you okay. do with it? What they do is and how to take a tick off of your skin is with the very finest tweezers that you can, you can get. And do not put a match, do not put Vaseline. You can upset that tick and they can regurgitate, unfortunately, a bacteria back into you. So we're telling people to take the very finest tweezers, get as close to the, the head as you can, pull the tick straight out very, very gently, place it in a bag, and then they can go to either www.tickreport.com or www.tickencounter.org. Both of these companies, they will test the tick for a fee. So what you'll do is you'll put the tick in a bag, you'll put it in the mail. They wanna know what date you found the tick, where you live, because they're tracking all of that. And then you will get a report within a week stating if it, if it was infected with the Lyme Borrelia burgdorferi and co-infections. Fantastic information, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank the you, Central Lex. Massachusetts Lyme Foundation does have a monthly meeting at Unitarian Universalist Church in Worcester. Uh, check out either the foundation's uh, website or take a look at Sterling Meeting House News. We also list those meetings. And thanks once again for all the good information, Thank Michelle. You, and Lex. good luck with the foundation. Thank you. The Conant Public Library presents The Busy Lives of Beavers, May 9th at 10.30 a.m. Terry Klingler, a local naturalist and educator, will lead this engaging talk about beavers. For more information or to register, call 978-422-6409. The Hiram O'Taylor American Legion Post 189 will hold their annual Ham and Beans Supper on May 23rd at 5.30 p.m. at the First Church in Sterling's Hall. Takeout is available. For tickets or more information, call Bruce Dagno at 508-852-8186. I'm Rebecca Powers and that's what's happening. If you have a local event you'd like to see on this program, contact SLCT. SLCT is looking for more volunteers to help with filming and editing. If you know someone interested, have them contact us at 978-733-1139 or email slc.tv810 at gmail.com. We'd like to remind you to find us on Facebook and YouTube.